Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father God. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for keeping us, Almighty Yahuwah, for you are the only one that can. <laughs> Father God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus, asking that you forgive us all sins, iniquities, trespasses, and transgressions. We ask that you silence all other voices that are in our spirit, so God, that we hear only your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, we pray right now, Father God, that you continue to feed us by your word as we come again and sit at your table, oh God. Father God, we pray that you um, give us wisdom not and knowledge, but above all, we ask for understanding of your word, oh God. We ask that you will continue to reveal yourself to us and reveal who we are in you, oh God. We thank you right now, Father God, for what you're doing. Have your way tonight, oh God, in us and in this, in this ministry, oh God, this class, oh God. Father God, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So last week we completed chapter 48 and God talked to us about his stubborn people. Amen. Us. <laughs> Amen. So to, um, we're going to um, begin chapter 49 and um, I'm going to do reading from kind of like I did a little bit last week. Uh, King James, and then I'll, I'll go to New Living Translation, um, somewhat like that. Okay? Amen. Amen. So we'll begin with um, chapter 49, verse 1 reads, and it says, Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. Verse two, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. Hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver has he hid me. Um, I want to go to Isaiah 51. Just jump ahead real quick to Isaiah 51, verse 16. And it reads, and I have put my words in thy mouth and have covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, thou art my people. So when we look here at um, verses one um, through two, I want to read it again from the New Leaven translation, just so I want to make sure we understand that. And it reads from the New Living translation, listen to me, all you in distant lands, and pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth. From within the womb, he called me by name, and he made my words of judgment as sharp as a sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. I am like a sharp arrow in his quiver. Verse three, and he said unto me, thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Because when you read those first couple of verses, you think right then he's talking about Jesus. But actually he's talking about what we've always said. God had always intended that Israel and Judah would be the examples of, of, of him or be the examples in the earth that all other nations would be drawn unto God. And he said from the very beginning, it, it was his intent from the very beginning. And he said um, in verse three, he said unto me, you are my servant Israel and you will bring me glory. So he, no matter what, even to this day, God, you, we gonna, God said, no matter what, my glory is gonna, uh, will be had in you. It's always been my intent. It's always been my purpose that we, like, um, Israel brings glory unto God. Amen. Verse four, it says, then I said, I've labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. And now says the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Through, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes 
of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Um, I want to stop right here and go to Isaiah 12 too, because it, this references, with, it's pretty much references back to this, what was already spoken, Isaiah chapter 12, verse two. And it reads, see, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He's given me victory. Because now who he's referencing is the Messiah. Are, do we all agree right here? Do Are we all in agreement so far? I want to make sure everybody understand. Okay. Um, verse six, it says, and he said, it is so Cecilia. Yes. And, and, and going back to Isaiah uh, 12, verse two, that was a cross reference for what verse, what in verse, what verse in chapter 49? What was the cross reference to that? That was uh, verse, verse five. Okay. Okay. Five. Okay. So I'm going to continue reading from the NLT. Um, starting at verse six, okay? He says, you will, you will do more than restore the people of Israel to me. I will make you a light to the Gentiles. And you will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. So we see here, he's speaking now of the Messiah. He's speaking of, of, of Jesus, okay? Verse seven, and it says, the Lord, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel says to the one who is despised and rejected by the nations, to the one who is the servant of rulers, kings will stand at attention when you pass by and princes will also bow low because of the Lord, the faithful one, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen, chosen you. Hallelujah. Um, kind of, I want to go to Acts, um, Acts 13, 47, and this was referenced verse 6. Acts 13, Acts, Acts chapter 13, uh, 47, 13, 47. And it reads, for so have the Lord commanded us saying, I've set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Amen. And um, reference verse 49, seven, I just read. I want to go to Isaiah, kind of jump ahead real quick. I want to go to Isaiah 53, verse three. And, it's, and it reads, he's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Amen. So we see here, he's what who's been referenced here and it's being repeated again. This is the Messiah. Okay. Seven. Um, verse eight. Now Isaiah kind of transitions here and now he's prophesying again um, as it concerns Israel being restored. Amen. And, it's, and it reads in verse eight. It says, through you, I'm sorry, um, this is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. I will say to the prisoners, 
come out in freedom. Let me see something. 49. I'm sorry, just a minute, guys. I want to go back and uh, I want to read it from the King James, if that's okay. So at verse seven, thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to whom man despises, it, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise and princes also shall worship. Because the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Verse 8, thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritage that thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways and their pastors shall be in high places. Now, I just wanted to read that. Just make sure anybody with the King James, they flowing and ain't nobody getting confused here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Verse nine from the New Living Translation, it says, I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom and to those in darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in green pastures and on hills that were previously bare. They will neither hunger nor thirst. The searing sun will not reach them anymore for the Lord in his mercy will lead them and he will lead them beside cool waters and I will make my mountains into level paths. Now, right here, I want to stop and um, go back to verse 42, verse 7. 42, verse 7, Isaiah 42, 7. And it says, it says, you will open the eyes of the blind and you will free the captives from prison, releasing those who sit in dark dungeons and those who are in spiritual captivity. Okay, this is what that means. But I wanted to kind of um, stop here for a minute. And go back to verse. Um, I do believe that is let's, uh, verse eight. And it says, at just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you and I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Though you, uh, through, through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. Okay, so um, as we continue to read on, we're going to read. And, and see some things that must uh, that are going to occur according to the scripture once the real people of Israel return. Okay? I, I see that hand, uh, Sister Pat Elder Barnes. Yeah, I was, um, I know what you, you were talking, but I, I just want to, when I was reading this and I read verse seven, and yes, it was talking about, it says, um, uh, to the one who is despised, to the one abhorred by people, to a certain rules, I mean, that describes us perfectly. A yes. whole people always despise. And in the natural eye, you look at this people and they don't look like anything. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying they don't look like anything, but you know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Always been pushed aside. And then, but what he says that kings will see, princes, princes will stand up and they will all bow down. I, I, mean, I don't know. This, this chapter really blessed me. <laughs> And, and, you know, um, it, it's amazing to me. It says, I was, you know, I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom and those in darkness come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in green patches and on hills that were previously bare. It says they will neither hunger nor thirst. Yep. The searing sun will not reach them, uh, will not reach them any, anymore. And that was verse 10. Mm -hmm. Well, all of this is supposed to be a part of the restoration. Amen. Okay. All this is a part of what should occur when true Israel is restored. There you go. 
And um, well, um, <laughs> you know, all I can say, I'm, I'm, I'm like the, what, what uh, OJ said, what it said, if the, if the glove don't fit, we must quit. <laughs> Ooh, See, come on now. You know, come so on. Said that the word is Amen. actually the guideline to the truth. Amen. If we what if we really kind of just read the word, like what Pastor Day say, not be a speed reader and read over, but really study and meditate on it. Amen. The power will begin to show us and we'll get understanding by his Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see things that we didn't maybe see before. There you go. We'll begin to get understanding. Amen. 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 Um, I want when we stop at verse 10. Uh, he's listen. I'm gonna read it again. Sister Sylvia, Sister Sylvia. Yes. and, and I, don't, I don't know what this where the scripture. He said it was it's, it's everything that these people who have been through. That's a sign upon them that they are the people. We have to remember that also. They Absolutely. will. Know, you know. Absolutely. It says it. You know, it says it will be for a sign and a wonder. And these were the different the things that would occur to Israel. How you gonna know who Israel is? Yeah. That's the prophecy. The curse. And it says it will be for a sign and for a wonder. That's the word. So verse 10, I'll read that again. It says, they will neither hunger nor thirst. The searing sun will not reach them anymore. For the oh. Lord, his mercy will lead them. He will lead them beside cool waters. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And I will make my mountains into level paths for them. The highways will be raised above the valleys. Mm. See, my people will return from far away from lands to the north and west and That's from the second the south exodus. as That's Egypt. That's so, the second exodus, man. I, Sister Eve, your mic. <laughs> um, Isaiah 40, verse 4. Isaiah 40, verse 4. Let me come, let me go back and Isaiah 40, verse 4. And it and this <clears throat> is saying the same thing. So it kind of references back to, to this. It says, um, I'm gonna start at three. It says, Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord, make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God, fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills, straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. The glory of the of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. That was the right one that I wanted for that. <clears throat> Four. Okay, forty nine twelve. Verse thirteen. It says, "Sing for joy, O heavens! Rejoice, O earth!" Burst into song, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on them in their suffering. I, I, right now, I don't look like they, they're in comfort. Okay? Matter of fact, can, I, I mean, I don't see anything that represents or would show that God is even being glorified right now. Because it says, you know what, it will, if we look at what is going on right now with that people, God, I don't see the glory of God in nothing that's happening right now. But, you know, God's right now, they don't look in too much comfort. Not according to this word. Okay. What, I mean, that's what the word, God can't lie. His word is, you know, so this is what should be if, when the true people go back, this is what should be going on. Okay. Um, let me let me see. Kind of let me see for Isaiah 43. Just a second. I don't know why I got this twice. Uh Isaiah 43, five through seven. Uh, Isaiah 43, um, verses five through seven. We read earlier, it says, do not be afraid for I'm with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. 
I will say to the north and south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Amen. Back to Isaiah uh, 49, uh, verse 13. And it reads, sing for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth. Birth, burst in a song, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on them in their suffering. <laughs> Yet Jerusalem says the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. Never. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I will not forget you. God will not forget his people. <laughs> Amen. Verse 16. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem's walls and ruins. Always. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I, I just wanted to say, I think um, I remembered uh, when I heard a teaching that uh, the church had replaced Israel. It changed what it was. Uh, the, uh, the doctrine. Replacement theology. Yeah, replacement theology. Yes. And when I start studying this scripture out right here, I said, wait a minute. Palm of his hand? He's not forsaken? So replacement theology, it was like a trick because he said, I have not forgotten. He's not forgotten his people. So when I read this chapter, I'm like Sister Pat now. It was very, very encouraging. Amen. Amen. He said, I've written your names in the palm of my hand. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 17. Soon your descendants will come back. And all who are trying to destroy you will go away. Uh, in the King James, it says, Thy children shall make haste, thy destroyers, and, and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. But to, to, to make where it's easier to understand what I'm reading for the, from the New Living Translation, it says, soon your descendants, your descendants will come back and all who are trying to destroy you will go away. Verse 18, look around you and see for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, they will be like jewels or bridal ornaments for you to display. That sounds like restoration to me. Restoration. Verse 19. Even the most desolate parts of your abandoned land will soon be crowded with your people. Your enemies who enslaved you will be far away. Well, don't look like the enemy's too far right now from what they're saying. I mean, like, you know, good, good grief. They, hallelujah, God. I mean, that is what I guess my, my thing is this, and not so much even make fun, but if we just look at the word, the word, what happened, what is going on, everything has to line up with the word. The word is the plumb line. Okay. Um, let me see here. I think it was. Verse uh, Zechariah, I had for, and let me see, verse 19, Zechariah 10, back, uh, verse 6 reads, Zechariah 10, verse 6, it says, and I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to the, uh, bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God and will hear them. 
and they of Ephraim shall be like a, a mighty man and their heart shall rejoice as though wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them and gather them for I have redeemed them and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people and they shall remember me in far countries and they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon and, and, place, shall not, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction and shall smite the waves of the sea. But anyway, and it just goes to show you too what he's saying here. We know that um, they've long been delivered from Egypt, but yet and still there are those, he's saying that are still there. They are still in Assyria. They are still in all these places. He said in the four corners of the earth, they're scattered. And yet he's gonna bring up, he's gonna bring them all back. Verse 20. It says the generations born in exile will return and say, we need more room. It's crowded. This is the New Living Translation. When he brings, he said, those that are born in exile will return and say, we need more room. It's crowded here. Verse 21. And then you will think to yourself, who has given me all these descendants? For most of my children were killed and the rest were carried away into exile. I was left here all alone. Where did all these people come from? Who bore these children? Who raised them for me? Verse 22, this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I will give a signal to the godless nations and they will carry your little ones back to you in their arms and they will bring your daughters on their shoulders. Okay, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to do something here. Let's look at Isaiah. If, go back to what we read in Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11, verse 10. Is that right? 10, 12, is it? Start uh, 11, starting at verse 10. In that day, <clears throat> the heir to David's throne will be a banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will rally to him and the land where he lives will be a glorious place. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to bring back the remnant of his people those who remain in Assyria and in Northern Egypt and Southern Egypt, Ethiopia and Elam in Babylonia or Elam, which is in Babylonia, Hamath and all the distant coastlands. Okay. So he said, he going to do it again. What he did the first time, he going to do it again. The word says it, he going to do it a second time. Okay. Verse 12, he will raise a flag among the nations and assemble the exiles of Israel and he will gather the scattered people of Judah from the ends of the earth. Then at last, the jealousy between Israel and Judah will end. Because, you know, as we've read, you know, Judah and Israel been at bumping heads, you know, they, they, they separated. But he said that's going to come to an end. They will not be rivals anymore. They will join forces to swoop down on Philistia to the west. Together they will attack and plunder the nations to the east, and they will occupy the lands of Edom and Moab. That's a, this is last day, uh, that's a last day word. And this haven't happened yet. Okay. Let's look at um I had Isaiah. 
Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Some, something else we read earlier. 14, Isaiah 14, verse. One. Isaiah 14 and verse one. It, this is saying the same thing. It's referencing the same thing. It says, but the Lord will have mercy on the descendants of Jacob. And he will choose Israel as his special people once again. He will bring them back to settle once again in their own land. And people from many different nations will come and join them there and unite with the people of Israel. The nations of the world will help the Lord's people to return. And those who come to live in their land will serve them. Those who captured Israel will themselves be captured. And Israel will rule over its enemies. That's just a say lie right there. <laughs> okay. Amen. We got any comments, any alibis right here? Or do we just want to sit and quietly think on this? Meditate. Amen. This is a this is a promise. Amen. Um, I wanted to, because uh, somebody contacted me this morning and was talking about um, reparations. And I said, look, I'm going to need, that's all right. God's going to take care that we don't need to be begging nobody for reparations. I mean, we need to understand the most high is the one who sent uh, his people into captivity. And he's the one who's going to do the restoring his way his will be done he did it and he'll finish it in his way and i will and i share with them i want to just read this it was it's in i'm gonna just go ahead a bump ahead a little bit here and it's in um isaiah 60 in verse 8 and it says and what do i see flying like clouds to israel like doves to their nest they are ships from the ends of the earth from lands that trusted me led by the great ships of Tarshish. They are bringing the people of Israel home from far away, carrying their silver and gold. They will honor the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has filled you with splendor. We don't want no dollars. The dollars dying is already dead. Look, okay, that's why I said we need to wait on God and God gonna do this thing all by himself. Okay, I see your hand, Sister Pat Elder Barnes. I just want to say um, the thing I think that we have to remember is we get in trouble every time we look to man to do something for us. We have to, because he gets, the, he won't get all the honor and the glory. And if they do anything, we will start to look to them, and he's not going to have that anymore. We're going to look to him. It's all about y'all this time. He said, "No, you won't. You won't worship me in spirit and in truth. I'm going to be the one that gets the glory." Hallelujah. Amen. Well said. Oh, Jesus. Um, he said on ships, he said they are ships from the ends of the earth, from lands that trust in me, led by the great ships of Tarshish. They are bringing the people of Israel home from far away, carrying their silver and they go. Now, look, we go, let's go ahead and get our Bible tonight. We lay down, just leave that page open right down and lay down with it. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. God is good. He means what he says and he says what he means. Not one word will fall to the ground. He's faithful. 49.22. What time is it? 22. <laughs> verse 22 it says this is what the sovereign lord says see i will give a signal to the godless nations and they will carry your little sons back to you in their arms and they will bring your daughters on their shoulders kings and queens will serve you and care for all your needs they will bow to the earth before you and lick the dust from your feet then you will know that i am the lord now I came across th this um, 
clip and I shared it, I think, I, sister, I may have sent it to you, Sister Eva, but it was all these European nations were there in Africa and each nation had a representative that was coming before Africa and they were um, repenting for their sin. They were bowing, they were on their knees, asking for forgiveness. And I said, Lord, I know we are truly in the last day. I know we are we right here at the end. And it was it was just, I, I mean, it was, I opened it up and it was the first thing that popped up in my feed. And I'm like, I was like, wow. Wow. I mean, they were on their knees. Asking for forgiveness. Uh, go ahead, Sister Eva. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw that. And, and thank you for allowing me to see that. Uh, and the scripture that came to my, my spirit, too, concerning that, how they would come and bow. Um, and they was crying out, you know, and they read off some of the things that they was repenting for, for the for the for the, even dividing his land for the uh, what you call it of Africa. They was I mean, I said, whoa, wait a minute. They. For the, um, it was everything. It was a list so long. And one man was just, he turned beat red. He he couldn't even finish what he was reading because he was weeping so much at the feet of, uh, uh, you know, people of God. But yeah, that was very, and I said, Lord, we got to be, I did, I said the same thing. Yes, we are there in those days. And uh, we don't know when, but he said we would have the signs. But I'm going to tell you something that just goes to show you, but you know, isn't I was like, you know, I said, well, praise God Oh God. That's for God to, to, to deal with that, you know, because the most high already he's said what the judgment and who will be judged and how they're going to be judged the most high. So that's for him, you know, but the thing about it is what really stood out to me, it shows, they know the word and they know who the people are. They know, they've always known. That's what really stood out to me. <laughs> and when I and, and, and when I shared it with my brother, he sent that scripture to me, he, uh, brood of vipers. <laughs> Who warned you to free from the wrath to come? Because they know the truth. God is, and you see this mass awakening happening, not just amongst God's people, but even the Gentiles. It's a mass awakening happening. And that we, it's nobody but the Most High doing this. <clears throat> uh, back to Isaiah uh, 49 verse. I want to, uh, verse 23, it said, kings and queens will serve you and care for all your needs. They will bow to the earth before you and lick the dust from your feet. And then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who trust in me, those who trust in the most high will never be put to shame. I want to go uh, again to Isaiah 60, but verse 14. And it reads, the descendants of your tormentors will come and bow before you. Those who despise you will kiss your feet and they will call you the city of the Lord and Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Though you were once despised and hated with no one traveling through you, it will make, it says, I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all generations. And he's talking about the people of uh, Israel and it's na the nation. Isn't that something? And what we I saw that, and it made me go to Isaiah 60. When I saw that, them all coming and bowing, each one took their turn to come. <clears throat> it, 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 it was, I was like, okay. It it was I'm gonna tell you it tripped me out. That's just bottom line. It was really it tripped me out to see it. It really did. It was I was like oh wow. I I was speechless. Verse 
Verse 24, who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Who can demand that a tyrant let his captives go? But the Lord says the captives of warriors will be released and the plunder of tyrants will be retrieved. This is the silver and the gold that we're going to be leaving with. For I will fight those who fight you and I will save your children. I will feed your enemies with their own flesh and they will be drunk with rivers of their own blood. All the world will know that I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Israel. Amen. Amen. So, any questions or comments here? God is, man, it's just amazing. The, it, it's amazing. God is amazing. So if no questions, um, we're going to go to our questions. If we have no comment. We're going to go to our first question. And the first question reads, who is the servant in this section? Um, as it, in verses one through three, who is the servant in this first part? And we, we spoke it. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Is it Israel? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. It is Israel. Israel is the servant being um, spoken of in the first three verses. Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And in verse two, to whom will the servant bring salvation? Whom is when Jesus, who will he bring salvation to? Right. Hmm? Gentiles. Hmm? Gentiles. Who all? To the world. Catherine. Okay. I would just saying Gentiles. And then I heard, I think so that's correct. And he for the Gentiles and for Israel. I think I heard that. To the world. Yeah, he's going to do it for both. Both yep. Israel and the Gentiles, kings and princes, mm -hmm. all going to get to have the opportunity of salvation. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Verse um, three, I used to say. It says, how will the servant comfort God's people? Um, verses five and seven. You okay. skipped one. Oh, did you I miss skip one? one? Yes, ma'am, number three. Who will worship him? Okay, who will worship him? You are. All right. Anybody had an answer? I put Israel. Amen. What was the verses for Stand that? Stand up and they will bow down because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, he has chosen. Amen. That's the, yeah, that's it. Catherine and Pat, that's both correct. That is correct. Amen. Uh, question number four. It says, how would a servant... Um, Comfort God's people. Mm. And that was that that was between verses eight and thirteen. So eight and thirteen. He said, I will answer you in the time of favor. I will answer you in a time of favor, and I will help you in the day of salvation. I will keep you and I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people. Is that it? So he stole the lamb? Yes. And he was going to bring restoration and deliverance. That's correct. So mm -hmm. if I see your hand, was you going to read that? 
I, I, I was going to read exactly what uh, Sister Pat was saying. I, I got here. He was said he was going to uh, he was going to protect them. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. going to as a covenant for uh, with them, and he would be he would reestablish them in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, he would assign them his own people again. And uh, he would tell the prisoners, he gonna tell them to come out mm. in freedom. You gonna come out and 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 light in the light. Those that was in darkness, mm -hmm. then um, he they would know they would be like grazing sheep in green pastures. Amen. And that's um, restoration. That's yes. him restoring restoration. and deliverance. Yes, ma'am. There'd be mm -hmm. no question as to who did it either. <laughs> a absolutely, he gonna do it in his way. That's what I'm uh -oh. saying. Quit. But see, that's people who don't know the word or understand the word, or you know, and we keep wanting men, like you said, Sister Pat, we keep wanting man to do. We're going to, you know, uh, we want man to do something. No, the no. word say God going to do it. God had already said what is going to occur. He caused the captivity. Well, our sins of our ancestors caused it. However, mm -hmm. he said, you know, he allowed it. And mm -hmm. then he's the one that's saying, I, he's the one that calls the terms. He's the one who says what would be uh, uh, what must be repaid and when it's going to be repaid and how it's going to be repaid. Amen. God's going to do that. You have a perfect plan. <laughs> Absolutely. He's going to do it all that he be glorified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God's going to get the glory. No man. Amen. Amen. I just love how we're at in verse 60 back here. I, I still have to, I have to get it just how he said, you know, back here in verse 60, how he said, and what do I see flying like clouds to Israel, like doves to their nest? They are ships from the ends of the earth, from lands that trust me, led by the great ships of Tarshish. They are bringing the people of Israel home from that's, that's Isaiah's chapter 60 right now that was verses yes. and yeah. that's for the new living translation yes uh, okay question number five who has God not forgotten no he has not forgotten Israel amen he said, the Lord has abandoned me. They, you know, says, Zion says, the Lord has abandoned me, but the Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget? You know, they asked the question, can a woman forget her nursing child or lack compassion for the child of her womb? Even if these forget, yet I will not forget you. Yes, he will it's have to. In the palm of my hand. Amen. And, can, and cannot be replaced. Nope. Compassion. <laughs> amen praise god amen covenant. Um, covenant yes that's true covenant. is it number six what is promised to zion it's a two question. <clears throat> what is promised to zion is the first part mm -hmm. Hmm. I verse 19. Can I say verse 19? No. It may be what read it, Sister Pat. For your waste and desolate places and your land marked by ruins will now be indeed too small for the inhabitants, and those who swallow you up will be far away. I mean, you want me to go on? Um, yeah, there's another that's part of the promise. Yes, that's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, no, back up. Go up, go up. Yes. Well, no, let me go. Let me go. It's because it says verse 19. Verse 14. Verse 18. Let me go back to verse um, 18. Okay, Just go ahead. Look up and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. As I live, this is the Lord's declaration. You will wear all your children in, as jewelry and put them on as a bride does. I, that's what I did. You want me to go back up? Well, Father, oh, that's right. She will overflow with new children. Yep. Who come, to, <laughs> who come to her. Yep. <clears throat> and after the second part of the question, it says, where will they come from? 
Oh, near full Quran. Quran. What did Catherine say? I said near and far. Yes, absolutely. That's true. They're going to come from everywhere. They're going to be from, all, from, from everywhere. Okay. Amen. Near and far. The four of the earth. <laughs> Amen. And if the, <clears throat> the last question was, how will all flesh know that the Lord is Zion's Savior and Redeemer? You can read that. And not verse 25. It's, it's 24 through 20. It's between 24 and 26. 24 and 26. This is going to be big. This is just what God going to do. It, how as a whole, he says, how will all flesh know that the Lord is Zion's savior and redeemer? Mm -mm -mm. Because he's going to fight. He's going to fight for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he know that they have been etched on his hand, his palm of his hand. Amen. He, they're they're going to know that he is their redeemer, the, the, the redeemer, the mighty one of Yasharel. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. He was saying, oh, Lord. Whoa. Your oppressors yeah. their own flesh. Yep. He, <laughs> saved your children. he said by saving her children from those mm -hmm. In with her by yeah. for fight, absolutely fighting for her. He gonna fight mm -hmm. for her. He's yeah. gonna restore her children. Oh, Saba! Oh, hallelujah! Yeah. That second exit is gonna be mighty. It's gonna he's you know it, you know it, it it's gonna be something when he do that second thing. It's gonna be different because it won't be the people like coming from one place, but coming from all over the world. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of that scripture say, who is this king? Who? <laughs> the Lord strong and mighty. Strong and mighty and mighty. God said he gonna do it. He gonna, I mean, he gonna have, he gonna send ships. He gonna send, woo, hallelujah. Y'all, this thing is awesome. I don't need, they can't make no movie this great. Because <laughs> your mind can't contain it, really. I, it really can't just even yeah. to imagine it. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're not going to need no passport, okay? <laughs> I can be like, you know, if God told you to do that and you're going to go on, if this was something God told you to find and you do that, I'm not saying that if that's what you heard God say. But um, for not, you be still and wait on God. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm like, I am I, mm -mm, I'll move, I ain't moving till the most high tell me to move. Mm -hmm. And when God mm -hmm. do this thing where he regather his people, Passport yeah. and all that stuff, you you ain't gonna need all of that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He got a plan. I had a dream. I had a dream about that, and you know, I didn't share it. I think I called you and shared it with you, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what that's that's what. Wow, I didn't have no passport. Nobody that I saw did not have a passport. So, not gonna that need dream. Uh -huh. yeah, passport. Our ancestors didn't have no passport to get here. No, they didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they had the slave law. Oh, That's God. right. They look why they got to buy their way out. He said you, and, that, and it was a scripture said that you didn't, um, you didn't, you didn't buy your way in. You're not gonna, nobody gonna have to pay for you to come out. Huh? There's a scripture I just read that they maybe it's in the further the uh, chapters we're gonna read um, ahead. But the most high, most high going to do this thing. Amen. All we got to do is trust God and just wait on God. And just, we just need to be ready. Be ready when Jesus comes. Okay. Oh, the I say, be ready. We just need to be ready. Our souls need to be right. Because it's too big for us to try to figure it out. It's, it, because my mind, I, like I said, I can't contain it. I, you read it, but you can't. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It, Absolutely. It, yeah, it's too many people. <laughs> no man can do it. No man could possibly do it. Wow. Man, I tell you, it is it, it's it's just a it's it, it is it's it's something that our minds can't even process. No. Our mm -hmm. minds 
cannot even process it. But God is good, he's faithful, and he's true, and he has a promise. And yes, he does. He's a promise breaker. Mm. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to go further on. Amen. The, uh, 20 is going to be kind of, I mean, uh, not 20, but uh, 50. Yeah, 50 will be kind of fast moving through it, but 51, you know, be a little longer. So I and so we're not gonna go further on. We're gonna go ahead and stop right here. Amen. Hallelujah. So I mean, if you guys can read, go ahead and read um 50, 51 if you can. I know this is time you'll be with family and friends and you know, I just pray you guys, God, just keep you and just bless you and you all will be safe. <clears throat> Amen. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to close in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. What is life to us? We thank you for your promises. We thank you for restoration. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for our Messiah who has restored us back to you, Almighty God. Thank you for sealing us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Almighty God. We ask that you continue to cover us and keep us, Father God. We ask that you bless everyone that is here tonight and every member of Kingdom Covenant Ministries and their families, their household, oh God. We pray a blessing over each and every one. We pray that you keep every family, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you continue to cover us and encamp your angels round about us, protecting us and keeping us, lifting us up, least we should dash our feet against a stone. Father God, we ask that you continue to encamp your angels around our homes and our properties, oh God. And Father God, asking that you don't allow any unclean thing, any unclean man, beast, or spirit to come on our properties or into our homes or the homes of our children, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray that you be glorified in us and through us, almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.